Next thing I have on this list, you're, you made a tweet the other day, yesterday, I believe, about your Pixel 6 Pro getting really buggy and that you can't recommend it at 900 yeah. bucks anymore. Yeah. And it kind of blew up. So let's yeah. uh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let me just read. I'll start off by just reading my tweet and, and explaining. I mean, it was just a tweet sort of in the moment as I was thinking about it, but I'll explain. I mentioned in the latest video, which was like, what's in my tech bag? The phone I'd been carrying for a while was the Pixel 6 Pro. Mm -hmm. And this is something we knew, which is like, I've, I've typically carried one of maybe four or five phones more often than the rest, just because I have you know, like preferences with the software and I like the way they work. Pixel has always been one of them near the top of the list. So mm -hmm. I've been carrying Pixel 6 Pro since, uh, I guess, since I reviewed it. It's one of the last phones that came out during the year that I reviewed. Put my SIM card back in it. And eventually I just got fed up over a slow accumulation of bugs mm -hmm. that had me swap my SIM card back to the Galaxy S21 Ultra and been using this phone for a couple days and it's just way better. So I tweeted from the S21 Ultra, oh, um, my Pixel 6 Pro has slowly gotten so buggy since launch in October that I can no longer recommend it at $900. Combined with the latest botched software update, it's just been a bad experience. So my SIM card's back in the S21 Ultra till the next review. Um, and it's true. So now I see this all the time where people will just like dump on a phone because they have like two or three issues and they expect everyone else's experience to be the same. And I always see that and I'm like, okay, so what were your actual issues? So maybe if I have them, I can I can notice them. Maybe I had a little, uh, maybe you have a small issue that I also had but didn't notice. And, yeah, and yeah. when you point it out, I'll notice it too. Things like that. We have access to a lot of smartphones here at the studio, so I have a lot of context. Um, so I figured what we do here is I'll just share all of the issues I've had with the Pixel yeah. that have added up over time to have me switch. Okay. So, okay, the latest one that actually appeared on camera in the <laughs> What's on My Phone video okay. is uh, it just dips way under 120 hertz uh, often. So now I have the smooth display mode turned on. Pixel 6 Pro has an LTPO display that goes up to 120 hertz. Mm -hmm. Pixel 6 has a 90 hertz display uh, that you can toggle back and forth. But I, I noticed Pixel 6 constantly at like 60 to 90 hertz, often at 60. Okay. Just... Not a problem, like 60 hertz is fine, but I got a 120 hertz phone for a for reason. A reason yeah. It's supposed to be on, I have the setting on, and it's I'm just scrolling around and Wait, using the phone Real quick, 60. Pixel 6 Pro at 60 to 90 hertz? Yep. Okay, just yeah. confirming, because. Yeah, so that that was kind of annoying just because I had to, you know, I'd restart the phone and it would start off back at 120 again and then quickly start dropping frames again, and it just feels like I'm seeing all these dropped frames and that was not cool, so that's one. I know other people have felt the same thing. And just generally, pixels slowing down over time is not new. And that's mm -hmm. been a, a thing we could probably talk for ages about. But I'm that's using one a Pixel thing. 4, so I can confirm on yep. that. Yeah. So that's that. And by the way, so I switched back to the S21 Ultra, and uh, every single one of the things that I have a problem with here is like miles better on this phone. So mm -hmm. that contrast is exaggerated, and that's what, for sure. you know, yeah. sort of light bulb moment for me. This phone is one year old and totally fine and probably will be fine for a while. Also, what I noticed when I tweeted this is a lot of, uh, like, iPhone people came out the woodwork. Like, see, this is why you don't buy an Android phone. This Pixel can't hold up. It's supposed to be the best one. Um, ignoring the second half of my tweet, which is yeah. I switched to a different Android phone. So, anyway, that's that's the one. Second thing, uh, the slow fingerprint reader. So, Pixel 6 Pro has that optical fingerprint reader at the bottom. Of course. No. It's not bad but it's definitely not as fast as even other optical fingerprint scanners and, of course, the ultrasonic one on the S21 Ultra, which is literally like, boop, super fast, extremely yeah. fast, um, and very accurate. So I like that they're all accurate, but that was something that was just a little bit annoying weighing on me. It's a little slower. And then the December update hasn't come out yet, right? So the December update, which is what I mentioned as a botched software update, uh, started to roll out and then was pulled. Okay. I never got it. I'm still on the November patch. And I specifically asked that because along with fingerprint sensor, that was supposed to fix the bug where if your phone dies, you lose your, you have to re, you have to factory reset in order to put a fingerprint back in. Yeah. Which happened to a friend of mine like two weeks ago. What a weird And he bug. texted me and he's like, is there any way I can do this without factory resetting? <laughs> and I was like, wait for the December update. He's like, but I still have to factory 
reset even to do that. So yeah, that's rough. Fun. I I'd never heard that. So like yeah, uh, if you don't have experience with other phones with faster fingerprint readers, you might not actually care about that at all. Mm -hmm. But because of again my context, I noticed that it was bugging me. Um, and then just a lot of bugs. So I mean, the phone will like randomly just choke up and lock up for for no reason. That's not something I can typically reproduce immediately on camera. But if you've had a Pixel, you might have had this happen to you also. Um, the camera app slowly getting slower over time. So okay. the way it opens will typically like I'll double tap the home or double tap the power button and it'll just fire right up and I can start taking photos. Um, and that's the way it was for like a month or two after launch. But then slowly it would it would lag and it would take really? an extra half second to launch and then it would it would open but then it wouldn't respond to taking photos for another second or so and just that slowly starting to age really quickly pretty concerning didn't like that uh weird lock screen bugs i've had i think david has had this problem a couple times too where he pulled his lock screen down or he went to lock the phone and it didn't turn the phone off but it displayed the lock screen stuff over the top of the home screen ui <laughs> which is like a really weird bug it's like yeah. you can see the guts of the phone it's very strange that that happened but it did happen a few times and also the notification pull down sometimes it's transparent sometimes it's not oh i have very a different strange. notification pull down bug where if i have my phone locked for generally like a normal amount of time like i'm not actively using it so generally when i grab my phone after not using it mm -hmm. unlock it and pull the notification down it like double swipes and then I'm all the way into settings and oh. it's pushed all my notifications down. Hmm. And it's something that I've replicated multiple times before and it just does it all the time and it drives me absolutely, when, cause I like unlock my phone to look at a text message, swipe down and it swipes past it and right. then I'm in my quick settings Do you and have, I have to scroll back up. I don't know if this is a setting on your phone but where you have like swipe down from the corner goes double swipe to settings and swipe down from the middle just goes I to don't notifications. I don't know if I have it. I don't think I've noticed it happen lately, but I have a video of it somewhere doing okay. it. Um, we could probably put it up on screen. Yeah. Uh, so that's just, but yeah, that's driven me insane. Just one more weird thing happening. Um, adaptive brightness on the Pixel is bad. And it's been bad for a while. Yeah, mine's pretty I bad. I think it's been bad since Pixel 2. So, and it's been bad again, like relatively speaking mm -hmm. i i've used other phones that have really really especially with the samsung really good auto brightness and yeah the pixel it'll just not dim itself in a totally pitch black room which is yeah. weird another odd quirk is anytime i turn the flashlight on the auto brightness goes all the way up on the phone which is <laughs> weird because i i have the flashlight on which means i'm in a dark room i'm not sure why you think i yeah. want the screen all the way up so just a, another weird quirk. I wonder if that's just the sensor. It's is it pulling from a sensor on the back or a sensor on the front, and then it should seeing, be on the front. That would be really funny if the flashlight. But it's was been just, bad for years. Okay. So it's it's weird. Yeah, it's a strange bug. But adaptive brightness is just bad. And again, on the S twenty one Ultra, which has a much better screen, it also has much better adaptive brightness. Um, so that's another thing. I have before anyone asks, I have tried speeding up animations to 0.5x. I've done that on mm -hmm. many Android phones. It does technically speed up the time it takes for the animation, but it does not make it smoother. Um, and have had worse than normal service. So this is another thing where like we're in the studio, we have these double pane glass soundproof rooms or whatever. Like mm -hmm. service is not great in the first place. Um, but I've just noticed it being a little worse than normal. And switching back to the S21 Ultra, I am seeing it get back to the okay. average levels. So all of those things put together. It's like, wow, the phone's slowing down. It's dropping frames. It's got bugs. I haven't gotten the update. It's, I just switched back to the S21 Ultra and just, that was it for me. So I want to end it with this. Mm -hmm. uh, I still think the Pixel 6 is a pretty good phone. It was 599. And the reason I bring that up is because I think there's a very different set of expectations at $900 that's an okay. expensive phone, than there is at $600. I still think Pixel 6 overperforms, over delivers at that price, especially with camera quality, with the display being 90 hertz most of the time. It's not LTPO, so I haven't seen actually that bug at all with Pixel 6, but maybe. Um, with the software, with the Google Assistant, with all the stuff that happens with Pixel 6. And then at 900 bucks, there's an extra set of like fit and finish expectations, you yeah. know? Like 
having little bugs and having display br- just drop frames when I'm expecting 120 hertz all the time. Um, and it it falls short on the $900 expectations. So okay. that's why I specifically talk about Pixel 6 in my tweet and whenever I talk about this stuff because that's the phone I've been using and been disappointed with. The Pixel 6 Pro. 6 Pro. Yeah. Sorry. 6 Pro um, is the one that's... Some of those things I would yeah. be pretty upset with if I had it on my Pixel 6. Um, Adam has a Pixel 6. He said he hasn't. Some of them are are harder for to happen on the Pixel 6. Like you said, you're seeing your screen drop to 90 frames, but the Pixel 6 is only doing 90 frames. Exactly. Or um, what else did you mention? Why am I blanking? I feel like you mentioned the something. notification thing that David has been having. I did have an issue this morning where I had to restart my phone because the notifications just disappeared. Huh. So that was yeah. weird. But yeah, the uh, notification shade the like once a week will do something weird. Just one time. Just so just I'll pull it down and it'll be it'll be totally blank or like not or missing the graphics or it'll be transparent for some reason, but with like gaps between the notifications for some I don't know. Huh. Just like weird things. Once a week, something weird happens there. So I have something that's been happening on my Pixel that I, it's obviously not a Pixel 6 issue because I'm using a 4XL, but I want to see if you've had or something because it is, I know David's kind of been having it, but it's been driving me absolutely insane. And I feel like I've had the phone for two years. I feel like it's only been doing it in the last maybe three months. Yeah. Um, it's It all has to do with Google Assistant. It triggers on my phone all the time, absolutely all the time. No one's saying Google, no one's saying oh. the the trigger word or anything, and I'll just trigger. And then along with that, hmm. when I'm in my house, which has Google Homes equipped, if I ask my Google Home something, it will always turn my screen on and start picking it up. And then my phone and my Google Home will basically fight over which one wants to yeah. do that. But like previously, and it's always worked flawlessly for me. If you're in a room where the Google Home is in and your phone hears it, it just ignores it because the yeah. home's going to pick it up. Okay, so on both those. So the first one, uh, I haven't had the random triggers from Assistant. I This is the sad part is like I miss a lot of things about the Pixel. Mm-hmm. One of them is is using voice type on like everything and it being yeah. extremely fast and accurate. Um, so I haven't had that problem. My suggestion would be to retrain the voice model. See if that works. I don't know if you've tried that. Okay. Um, the other thing uh, is, yes, when your phone is in the same room as a smart assistant signed into the same account, they're supposed to decide amongst each other immediately which one should handle mm-hmm. the request. And I find that when I switch to a new review unit and I bring it home to my house with the the speaker in it, the first time I ask assistant something, my phone pops up a little dialogue box saying, did the correct thing answer this query? Oh. And I have to say, yes, I would the speaker love if did it. Asked me that. So I suspect that's buried in the settings somewhere where you okay. can either reset sensitivity or something it's like that. It's just so weird because like we moved into my house in June mm-hmm. or July and it worked totally fine. And then it's just been these last couple months that it's been starting to do this. And it mm-hmm. drives me wild seeing my phone like on the coffee table. I'm on the couch. It's a place I've asked Google to do things a billion times before. And I'll see my phone like light up. And then sometimes my phone will be like, sure, turning off the lights or Google Home. Mm-hmm. What does he say? Sure, turning off the lights. Another thing, shut up. I don't care. I just want you to turn the, the lights off. Mm-hmm. I think that's another thing that just drives me insane. But anyways, yeah, my rant. Yeah, no, a lot of a lot of questions have come up. Like my replies are lit. I think I have like 1,500 replies to that tweet. Where everyone's like, well, yeah, it blew what, up. what about this? What about that? Um, I don't think it's a tensor issue. I think that was one of the questions is like, okay, well, you've had all these issues with Google making their own chip. Did they mess it up? I I think it's a little more software specific mm-hmm. uh, because, first of all, some of these things, especially the slowdowns, have happened on previous pixels for me. I made a whole yeah. video like four years ago or something like that um, about kind of the same thing where I was switching from a Pixel to a OnePlus because of the smoothness difference, because of how much it slowed down over time. Yeah. Um, so I do feel like it's a little more software related, but then, yeah, like other people on other pixels have issues. Like this is something Google has had a long time to hear complaints about. And I wonder like, do they hear the complaints? I'm sure they do. They do definitely. What do they actually do about it? Are they able to, you know, push updates, prioritize software? Yeah. You know, those sorts of things are a question mark. So this is sort of a classic pixel story. It's happened yeah. before. I mean, and it also came out with one of their bigger software updates in a long time. Like 12, it, 12 is huge and totally different in a lot of different ways. So yeah. I'm sure plenty of things came out of that. So you're bringing a new phone, new software, 
all your previous phones. There's a million variables. I'm yeah. Hopefully they're working on it. But yes, yeah, seeing like December update, December update mm-hmm. that hasn't actually come. Um, I saw Artem posting on your tweet that you can sideload it, and he said that fixed a lot of things. But yeah. like again, we're nerds. We can sideload things, but like the average people, yeah. that's not an option. Yeah. As far as like me recommending a phone, I think that's what it comes down to. I I don't think I would recommend Pixel Six Pro to anyone. Because it's yeah. still eight nine hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and if it's going to have all these issues, and it still doesn't have that software update that fixes them officially, I'm not going to go. Oh yeah, just spend the spend the nine hundred bucks, and then try to find an APK to appropriately sideload this OS update. It's like, well, nope, that's not a good idea. <laughs> so I'm going to say, don't buy Pixel Six Pro right now. Huh. Hey, thanks for watching this clip on Waveform. Uh, I hope you're able to multi-thread your brain. What? Don't think about it too hard. I won't. Just do it. And click the like button. Best outro yet? Yeah, sure. Easy.